Myth of Empires is a massive open world sandbox multiplayer survival RPG with an eastern medieval themed aesthetic. The game has a diverse range of zones such as rainforests, swamp plains, mountains, the alpines and desert. The game features a classless directional combat system, mounts, full loot PvP, the ability to build giant bases in the open world, as well as take down high level enemies to earn resources to craft powerful gear. The game's basically Rust, but Eastern Medieval themed, but also with scuffed Mountain Blade style combat system. Myth of Empires is currently buy to play in early access, and I decided to play it because it popped up on my Twitter feed one day. I hadn't heard anyone talking about it, and the theme suits my channel. But first, sponsor. War Thunder. This is one of the most giga chad games out there and the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made. Obliterate your opponents with more than 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters and ships in dynamic real-time PvP battles, where every vehicle is incredibly detailed and modelled down to their individual components, resulting in a realistic and highly immersive combat experience. PvP in War Thunder is intense, tactical and action-packed. There's multiple multiple different modes ranging from arcade battles, simulator battles, missions, PvE and even some crazy events such as tank football. On top of having thousands of vehicles, you can also customise them too. Add camouflage, markings, paintwork and attachments to stand out from the crowd. The thing I like the most about War Thunder is this game doesn't display damage with a boring HP bar. You can physically see the damage that vehicles suffer by looking at their components. Play War Thunder now on PC, Xbox Series XS, PS5, PS4 and Xbox One. Click my link in the description below and get a large free bonus pack which includes multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, boosters and much more. Download now. Myth of Empires. So over here to the left we've got official game server and we've got custom server which suggests to me this might be a bit of a limited MMORPG, like maybe 100 players per server but maybe I'm wrong. Is this actually an MMO or is it like a survival game? And before I can even start the game it wants Fort Knox level of security. Mate, I don't even know if I'm going to stick around and play this game. I don't care that much about security. Ask me when I'm 12 hours in and I like the game. He'd unblock all of this information out. So so let's create a character. Three different starting presets and by the looks of it there's a crap load of sliders. It doesn't seem as though the sliders are too extreme, can't make anything too hideous. Oh, I take that back. Small body so a harder to- Yo! He looks like a sumo. Okay, straight away, something for the pros list. This game has fat representation. I've never seen an online game where you can make your character this fat. If this guy fell off the top of a hill, he's rolling down like a bowling ball. Beautiful. Dirt. You can make his skin more dirty. Nice. You only see the muscles if your character's like middle body fat percentage. That's kind of realistic. Character customization seems pretty good so far. Okay, let's make a size like this. What is that? Wait, we haven't even messed around with the eye sliders yet. I can't believe at the start of this character customization, I was saying, it doesn't seem as though the sliders are too extreme. Can't make anything too hideous. Wasn't I wrong? With a nose like that, we're gonna call him the sniffer. Oh my god. He looks like a human vacuum cleaner. Give him elf ears. Beautiful. This might take the cake for the ugliest character I've ever made in one of my first impressions videos. Oh, you can have tattoos, can you? Torso, tattoo. Ooh. The tattoo system's very cool. You can move it on any part of the body. This game actually has top tier character customization. Mate, you can have so many tattoos. Can we just go like fully covered in tattoos? You can rotate. You've got full control over that. Genuinely impressed. There's got to be a limit to how many tattoos you can have, surely. So my theory is if I just have infinite tattoos, my character's gonna like be laggy for other players when they try to attack me. Tactical tattoos. Can this go around to his back? It can. Okay, that's the maximum amount. I can have six different tattoos on one part of the body. So then I can go to the left arm and do the same thing. Game's got my attention now. Can you make it go on the inside of the leg? You actually can. This game has the best character customization for tattoos I've ever seen. Usually you don't get this amount of control. Multiple tattoos on one body part. Uh, color me impressed. The tattoos themselves look super realistic on the skin as well. Very good skin texture. And there he is. A few different voices to choose from. What is his name? What does he look like to me? His name is The Gobbler, because he gobbles things. And there he is, our beautiful character, the Gobbler. What type of game even is this? PvE 
Hunfang. 52 MS ping, we'll give that one a crack. Once you've chosen your server, you then choose your spawning location. This to me suggests that this game could be kinda sandboxy. Let's be born into the forest. Here we are, the gobbler. He spawned into the world. UI's a bit weird, isn't it? Collect grass with E, okay. So that suggests it's a bit of a survival game. Can we punch trees. We are gathering plants. I can't believe this is my character. By the way, on the intro to this video, I would have done the research later as to what type of game this is and like figured out what type of content it contains. The intro is always recorded at the end of the video. So the stuff that you see when I'm actually playing these games, it's all genuine first impressions. Okay, level two from just gathering plants. Level three, leveling up very quickly from just running around pressing E. So now I've got an ax, can I go chop a tree? Oh, we are actually gaining branches. The ax is just bouncing off the tree. It's like, boing. So if I hit the rock with the hammer, is that gonna, no, that's his fist. Don't, don't right hook the boulder, my friend. The user interface is absolutely horrible. As with like most Chinese games, it's just like, let's see how much shit we can put on the screen whilst still having the game be somewhat playable. It's like a challenge for them. There needs to be like a button on the menu that just says, click this to tell the UI to fuck off a little bit. New mission and collect tax. It's the last thing I want to hear. Booted up Myth of Empires to try and escape from reality a little bit. And within five minutes, the game's reminding me about tax. That's what the people want. Another pro of Myth of Empires, the game's extremely sleep inducing. So if you've got insomnia, play this for 30 minutes before bed and you're cured. The devs made the tactical decision to not include background music or a whole lot of noise other than just gathering sound effects and wind. Can we swim or will we just sink? Because I have got a big fuck off hammer attached to my ass. Oh, never mind. We are hydrated, we are well fed, and we are happy. Three things that every man strives for. So now the music decides to kick in. Music reminds me of RuneScape a little bit. What's this, a pile of horse shit or is it a rock? Let's find out. Why is this animal walking in such a peculiar fashion? What is it doing? <laughs> Oh my god, they're an animation on that deer. Are you okay, Mr. Deer? The animals are alert. What is going on? What are we playing right now? I have no idea. This game costs money. Another example of gaming brilliance. Oh, are these other players? No, they're vagrants. They're fighting against a wild boar. I'll help the boar. Oh, oh my god, this game's scuffed. Oh, we're dead. We got clapped in one stab. So when you die, you drop all of your stuff. But the game was friendly to me and that it just let me res on the spot. Interesting. Can we kill this boar? Fuck you, pig. Stab it in the eye. Mate, Gobbler's not very strong, is he? Those boar sounds sounded exactly like the boar sounds from the barons in World of Warcraft. The Gobbler's corpse just laying there on the floor. Isn't that terrifying? It's just a mangled amalgamation of flesh. I'm a little bit upset, really. I don't understand why Myth of Empires wasn't in the running for Game of the Year against Elden Ring. It just... Pisses me off that this game wasn't really considered. So far, it's been uh, a real work of art. There it is. Our warrior is finally equipped. Let's see if I can exact my revenge on those boars. Hello, wildlife. You're about to take a spear from the gobbler. Big damage. Oh, there's a boy and a girl. This is one of the most terrible combat experiences I've ever had. What is this? How did that kill me? It, it jumped two meters in front of me. <laughs> It was two meters in front of me and it just does this. And my character's getting killed. <laughs> what is going on? I can't even do the first quest because killing a basic animal is impossible because the game's so scuffed. Can you imagine the PvP? To be fair, this game is early access. Maybe one day it'll be possible to kill the balls. Target acquired. Can we crouch? We can. Shh. The gobbler is known for his stealth skills. This is a man who has hunted the wilds, patrolled the plains. He is one with nature. He is in tune with the sounds of the forest. Gobbler says his sight on the prey. Level five female deer is on the menu tonight. And with a swift stab of the spear, his prey has eluded him once again. Another night where the gobbler goes hungry. The gobbler has found his next victim. Level seven sleeping female fox. The gobbler's in pursuit. The fox can't escape the speed of the gobbler. Oh, we got it. No, we didn't. The chase is on. The fox has eluded gobbler. 
in the only possible way, through its defiance of gravity. I will kill something, I swear to God. The gobbler's sweating. He's using all of his remaining strength to hunt down the fox. And finally, his patience is rewarded. Mission Animal Skinner. Oh god. The last time I hunted an animal, it didn't go too well for me. Something that's also worth mentioning, the map in this game seems to be bloody huge. And this is all one big giant open world. It seems as though that giant snowy mountain that I can see in the distance is actually here on the map. You can go even further than that. And you can tell that that's really far away. That's pretty cool, being able to see giant mountains in the distance and it actually be a place that you can go to. I guess there's also something to be said for the density of this forest. It's very dense, full of vegetation. Looks decent enough. What is that? Is that another player? We're about to find out. Wait, this isn't a PvP server. Shoot him in the dick. Ugh. Yeah, I'm on a PvE server, so I can't like kill people and loot their stuff when they're offline, which is probably a good thing. I hate that about survival games. Like when you log out, you know that you're going to log back in and you've lost everything. What about this animal? This doesn't look like a boar. It looks like a rat or a pig. Big damage. Oh, that's a deer. Right, let's try throwing a rock. Smash the little thing around the head. Let's go. Rock damage. It was only a few weeks ago I played Rise Online and said that was the worst game I played in 2022. This is actually worse. This game was developed by somebody that eats dog food. Okay, let's go explore. Maybe the world's more interesting. Let's venture out of the starting area and begin a great adventure. I'm trying to give the game a chance. Whether or not it deserves a chance is another question. Oh, it's raining now. And you can actually see the rain splash in the river. Visually, that looks quite nice. The atmosphere of the rain, the colours. Yeah, looks good. Here we have a bunny rabbit. And here we have my dinner. The gobbler has found sustenance. And then the music randomly comes on again for the first time in about 30 minutes. Place our foundation. Building under construction. It's a nice little animation when you place it, I guess. Oh, for the quest, I need to place four foundations. Mate, fuck that. That's too much gathering. It's going to take me like an hour to build a house. I've tried it. The game's so fundamentally bad in terms of the combat, the UI, just everything, except the current customization. I just feel like the game is kind of unplayable. Myth of Empires, the worst game I've played in 2022, and that's saying something. Myth of Empires pros and cons. Obviously, the game is as raw as a freshly butchered cow, so these things might change with future updates. The character creator is very good. You can make your character fat as fuck as well as cover his entire body in tattoos with a level of tattoo customization I've never seen before in an RPG. When you kill animals, you can stab them, and their dead bodies have physics, which is nice attention to detail. As you can tell, I was struggling to find pros to list for this game. The world is absolutely massive, I liked that I could see a giant mountain in the distance, and upon checking my map, I realised it was a place that I could actually travel to. And if you're having problems sleeping, play this game before bed and your issue will be solved. The combat feels awful. Like a completely scuffed version of Mountain Blade's directional combat system, but way worse. The game feels almost unplayable due to rubber banding, and mobs actually being located in a different location to where they appear. The game is extremely buggy, so much so that I think it's too early for early access. The UI is a mess. The in-game background music is inconsistent. The game will be completely silent for 30 minutes, then you'll randomly get startled with a minute of background music. Crafting in this game takes way too long. The animation quality on everything from gathering to attacking to running and jumping is absolutely abysmal. It's one of those games where you're going to log out and lose everything due to an offline raid the next time you log in. And it's also another survival game with small player cap servers. I think each server only supports up to 100 players. So with such a massive world, what's the point? Despite Myth of Empires still being in early access, I don't really see this game ever becoming popular, even if it didn't have any of the bugs or issues I encountered in this video. Other than the theme, what is this game actually doing different compared to any other survival game? The combat direction is horrible, the UI is bad, it's got small server caps. Why would anyone play this over something like New World, which does similar things minus the building, but way better? Even Glory of Victus would be a better option as another similar game that has a better implementation of the combat system Myth of Empires is going for. 
I don't get it. The character creator is great fun though. It just seems to me like this Eastern dev studio is a little bit late to the survival genre bandwagon. Oh, almost forgot to mention, the devs were also taken to court by Snail Games for allegedly stealing the source code from Ark Survival Evolved, resulting in the game getting booted off Steam. GG lads. But that's it for this video guys, as always let me know your thoughts on Myth of Empires in the comments below. Do you also want to make the donkey decision of spending $30 on this game like myself? Shout out to War Thunder for sponsoring this video, and don't forget to click the link in the description below to play this epic vehicle vs vehicle combat game right now. Social media on screen, spear that like button like it's a dead animal for the algorithm gods, and I'll see you in the next one.